There are several ways to design parts on the Mach 1 machine. You can load a DXF, you can use our built-in shape templates, or you can do a point-to-point -point design. I'm going to be showing you what we call the classic design space, which is where you make a drawing, which you then place the material and cut it out. So the first way to do that is to load a DXF file. So you click on Files, Load from Flash Drive, click on your flash drive, and then load whatever DXF file you need. So before I get into any other features, I'm going to show you kind of the navigation pane that you see here. So first of all, you can pan around. So you can go, maybe your DXF loaded all the way up here, find where you are. You can zoom in, and the grid is going to change size as you change that zoom level. So zoom all the way in, zoom all the way out. If you're all the way up here and you're lost, you can't get back to the origin, you can always click this Home button in the top right of the screen, and that's going to reset your pan and your zoom so your design is centered. If you make a change that you don't want, for example, drag and drop that over here, didn't want to do that, you can click this Undo button, redo it if you want, and go back and forth just like any other program. If you would like to use other units besides inches, which is the default, you can go to this units drop down up here and select the ones you want. For example, we'll go to centimeters, that's going to change the grid size, or to millimeters, but we're in America, so I like to use inches as my default unit. So now that we got that out of the way, there's one more kind of um, nice feature we have on this. So as you edit the shapes, you can click on the edge of the shape. Don't click on the inside, because it only is going to register your clicks if you click right on the edge. So click on that edge. If we want to move it, you can click this plus and minus button right here to change whatever dimensions you want to do. But if you have a more specific uh, dimension you want to change, you can click on the text and that's going to pull up the keyboard. So if I wanted to move this over by a sixteenth of an inch, and you didn't remember the decimal value for that, you could always type 10625. But if you didn't remember that, you could click plus a sixteenth and then do your fraction math on the built-in keyboard right here. So really whatever combination of fractions you want to do, you can click on that. If you want to move it, say, negative 5 inches, just click negative 5, and then that scooted it over 5 inches right there. So click Done, and then we're just going to undo that. So now that we got the basic screen navigation out of the way, I'm going to show you um, some of the templates that we have built in. So when you click Add, that's going to pull up all the built-in shapes, and you can scroll through this to see what's available. Kind of starting at the top, I'm going to click on just a normal rectangle, and that's going to be a default value of 1 inch by 1 inch. If you wanted to use the machine to show it the center of that rectangle, you would click your locating position center. If you, wanted, if you knew the corner position of your rectangle, you would want to click the corner. And that way, when we go over to the play screen, it'll be off the corner, and I'll show more of that later. You also have inside, outside. Um, that's probably the most common field you're going to have on every single shape that's a closed shape. And that's showing it whether you want to keep the part or you want to keep the cutout in the plate. So for example, if I wanted to have a base plate that had a rectangle in it, I would make the rectangle an outside because it's going to pierce on the outside of the rectangle, lead in, and offset the curve to the outside. If you wanted a square hole in a piece of steel plate, you would click that as an inside. And that way you're going to have a nice clean cutout in your plate. And then as you go down here, a lot of these dimensions are going to be self-explanatory, width, height, rotation, corner radius. But if you see any of these and you're not sure exactly what it means, you can always cl click on this question mark here, and it's going to show you what you're modifying on the shape when you click on it. So let's go and clear this again. And I'm just going to go through these shapes real quick and show you what's available and what dimensions you can change on it. So we got a circle here. Uh, you can make lines. I'm not even going to show that. We've got slots here. You can see the example of what dimensions you're modifying there. Got polygons, make an octagon, a nonagon, really whatever you want. Or you could just make a rectangle. Make it more interesting than that. Then we've got quarter circles, type of gusset. Triangle gussets look like that. 
got tea gussets. Um, so this is, we call these the notch shapes. So if you wanted to make a little cutout in the side of a piece of angle or plate, got a couple varieties of these. Then of course you can go in and add text. So you want to make a label on something, go in here and click. Oops. Whatever text you want to do, so. Uh, couple different types of pad eyes in here. So got the square pad eye. You can go add a tombstone. So this is basically just a rectangle, but that only has the rounded corners on the top. Um, people use those as like beam stiffeners. Another type of pad eye. Flanges. Um, one comment on this is if you wanted to make a pipeline blind flange, you could click on that and just set your inner diameter to zero. And now you have a pipeline. Wedge, pretty commonly used in you know, shipyards, construction, get stuff lined up. And finally, we've got a spanner wrench. So these are all the shapes we have currently. I just want to make a comment. If you're cutting apart frequently and there's no template for it and you think it would be useful, we can throw together a template for you pretty quick and just release it on the next update. So please, anytime you want a template, just send us a text or an email and we are happy to add that for you. So with the basic shapes that are in the Add Shapes menu, you can put them together and make some real-world structural parts or parts for other applications as well. The one I'm going to show here is a base plate. We've gone ahead and drawn out the dimensions on the table um, this might be something you would get on a PDF drawing in your shop. So the first thing here is on the outside, we have a rectangle. All these dimensions are done off this corner here. And so the easiest thing to do is going to be to make it a rectangle, position the corner, and then give it our dimensions. So let's go ahead and do that. So add rectangle. The width is 12. The height is 8. And then, as I said, we're doing everything off the corner. So let's go and change this locating position to corner. And since we're ending up with the base plate as an outside, we'll go and change that as well. Now, we've got these circles here as well. We need to lay all these out so they're at the right spacing and distance from the edge of the rectangle. To do that, let's go ahead and go to our add circle. We'll make these circles an inch and a quarter. So one plus a quarter. This first circle in the corner is two inches up and two inches over. So this direction is going to be your X. This direction is going to be your Y. In this case, they're the same. So we'll set both to two inches. Now we have our first circle here. The next thing we want to do is make sure we have all six of them. So I'm going to click on this circle, click pattern, and then I need to first set the, um, the number. So since this direction is X, this is Y. We have two along Y, which is the default, but we have three along X. So we're going to increase this to three. Now, based on this, you can also see that the center to center spacing is four inches. So we'll just go ahead and increase the spacing on both of these to four. There you go. So in the real world, you probably don't just need one of these. You probably need a bunch of copies. To make a copy of the whole thing, what we're going to do is do a long hold on the screen until you see this Group Shapes button pop up. I'm going to click on this and then select all the shapes that we want to group together. So we're going to select all the circles in the pattern and then this outside rectangle. Click Create Group. Now you can see as I drag this around, it's going to be moving it all as one unit. If we just needed two of them, we could click clone. It's going to make one copy and we could move our finger to drag it around wherever we wanted. However, if you wanted a bunch of copies of this, the thing to do would be to go click on the outside shape and click pattern, just like we did for the circles. Um, 
we're going to make sure we're going to want to set our spacing so that it's not overlapping the previous one in both dimensions. So since, since this is a 12 inch wide, we're going to set our X spacing to maybe 12 and a half so that it's not overlapping in that direction. And since it, since it is eight inches tall, we're going to make our Y spacing eight and a half. And there you go. You can see we end up with four base plates now. And if you wanted to make more of them, you could just increase or decrease your count so that you had as many as you needed. And there you go. That's how you can make a base plate, make copies of it. And then in a later video, we'll show you how to place it down and actually cut this thing out. I just showed how to make a base plate with the add shapes, group it together, then make a pattern of it. That worked pretty well for the base plate since it's a rectangle and you don't end up with a bunch of wasted material when you copy and put them next to each other. However, let's look at a shape like this. If I were to just pattern this as is, what you're gonna see is that these, you end up with a bunch of wasted material. So all this gap right here and here is gonna be wasted. A better way to do this is to, before you make a pattern, clone the initial shape, rotate that clone 180 degrees, and then lay them together so that they're nicely nested next to each other. I can then group both of these together by doing a long hold, group shapes, select both of these. We have a group. And then when I pattern this, it's going to be a much more efficient use of the material. So click pattern, X spacing again will be 12, about 14 on the Y, a little less than that. When you're doing this, you just want to kind of mess with the spacing until you get it how you want it. And we can make as many copies of this as we want, and it's going to be a much more efficient use of the material.